Hi ladies, my name is Andy and I'll be teaching you how to make a natural gourd shaker aid today, like one of these. So materials that we will need for making a gourd shaker aid are a gourd, like this, or this, or this, string or twine, like this, or this, a pair of scissors to cut the string carefully, and plastic pony beads. And today I'd like to use purple and green. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is take string and cut an um, odd number of pieces of string, and we want them to be about two yards long or about six feet. And you wanna make sure that they're not too short because you'll run into a little bit of trouble and you'll have to add more string. So I'll cut it at about six feet here. And then I'll just continue until I have an odd number of pieces. And for a gourd of the size that we're gonna be making today, I would, I would use maybe nine or 11 pieces of string to start with. Here's four, and you wanna to try to make sure that each piece of string is about the same length. Always be careful with the scissors. Number seven. Number nine, and I think nine is all that we're gonna need today for the size of gourd that we're using. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make what I like to call the collar of the gourd skirt or net. You can do this by either taking one piece of string and wrapping it and tying it around your gourd neck. Or um, what I like to do is actually take three, three of the strings from, from the nine that I've cut and I like to do a standard braid just to give it a little, a little bit more strength around the collar and, and it looks a little nicer too. And um, I'll show you how, how to make this braid. You take these three pieces and line them up so they're, they all start at the same place, roughly. And we're just gonna tie a knot. Right, so I've got all three pieces. I like to tape them down to a surface. It makes it a little bit easier to, to start the braid. So what you do here is you, you get them a little bit separated and I start with the outer right one. So you take the string on the right and you bring it over the center one until that one is in the center. Then you take the left and bring that to the center and then the right to the center, left to the center, so on and so on. Just like, um, just a standard braid, like you might braid your hair. And you try to make sure that they cross over in a relatively tight um, overlapping, but not too tight so that you don't wanna pull it out from here. And you just keep going all the way until the end it makes it just a little bit prettier and a, a, quite a bit stronger, actually. Now that we've got our braid finished and knotted on both ends, um, what I do is then I just tie these two ends together, just one loop and then another loop. And I like to leave a little bit of a, a tail on because I think it's a nice little decorative touch once we're finished. Now, this would be big, uh, a good size for a bigger gourd, um, but today we're gonna make a slightly smaller one. Um, so what I'd like to do in that case is fold this over on itself so it's doubled. And then I slip it over the gourd neck. And you wanna make sure that you can get at least one finger um, in between the collar and the gourd. Um, because you do want the skirt or net to have some movement to move away from the gourd and slap back into the gourd. So now that we've got our collar on our gourd, we're ready to start putting the rest of the strings on. I like to make sure to use an even number of strings. And the reason that I like to do that is if, if you decide to do any kind of alternating pattern, it really helps to keep track of that pattern. Say you wanted to go light bead, dark bead, light bead, dark bead. Um, that'll help you keep track of it and it'll keep it keep an even pattern throughout. 
I'm going to get these all separated. Great. So now we're going to take a single piece of string, find the two ends, hold them together and run your finger along the inside until you find the center of them. And now we're going to make what's called a cow hitch knot or something very similar to it. And what you do is you go behind this collar with the loop. You pull this little loop here, you find the two ends of your string and put them through this loop. Just pull it and not too tight because you might end up wanting to move it around. You see that? And now you have a loop going around the collar and you have two strings coming off of it. And now we're just going to repeat that process all the way around, putting an even number of strings on and try to create even spacing between the strings. So now that we've got all of our strings evenly spaced on the collar of our gourd, we're ready to start tying them together to start creating the skirt or net for the beads. So what I do here is I take two neighboring cow hitch knots and I take the inside string from each one. So the inside from this one and the inside from this one. And we're going to take these two and make a knot between the two of them. Now, at this point, it can get a little tricky on how you're going to hold your gourd. Sometimes you can find something to, to sort of clamp it or hold it up in front of you. A lot of times I end up holding it in my knees. Um, if you do that, make sure that you're taking breaks and stretching a lot um, because you can get kind of stiff, kind of hunched over like that. Um, but to make this knot, I am going to have to use my knees to hold the gourd. So I will demonstrate that. <laughs> so we do one, one loop. And you want about, about a fingertip's worth uh, length of this. And then you're going to just make another knot to secure it. Pull that one. Now we got a nice tight knot. And what we're going to do now, slide this over a little bit. We're just going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take the inside knot of this neighbor cow hitch knot and we're going to tie it to this neighbor. So one loop, try to make it about the same length as its neighbor. And one more loop to create our knot. There we go. And we're going to continue this process all the way around until each one of these are tied off like that. So now that we've got all of our strings on the collar and we've got them all, all neighboring cow hitch knots tied together, we're ready to start putting the beads on and designing our skirt pattern if we want to have a pattern. So really you can choose any pattern you want, whatever bead color you want, um, just have fun. I'm going to do purple on purple and green and I'm going to alternate. So I'm going to take two purple beads. And I'm going to take just one of these strings here. I'm going to slide one, two purple beads onto the string and let it slide up to the knot. Now you can, this is up to you, however many beads you want to use. The more beads you use, the louder your uh, gourd shakery will be. So you can put beads on this one as well um, so that you'd have beads all the way around covering the entirety of your net. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip those. So I'm just going to make a knot here right now and so on. So now all we do, we're going to move this over to my knees again to get a good grip on it. And we're going to loop this behind its neighbor. 
pull it into a diamond shape. And then we're going to make one more knot, but we're going to try not to make this diamond any smaller from the, from where it is now. So pull that. And then you got a knot and that's your first row or your, your first rung of beads. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate colors. So I'm going to take two green beads. And I've got two neighboring strings. One green bead. Two green beads. Let it slide up to the knot. Grab its neighbor. Make one loop, pull it up and make a diamond shape, just like we did on the purple side. And then make one more knot. So now we're well on our way. We've got two and we're going to keep going around. These are going to be purple, green, purple, green, purple, green. And we're going to just keep doing that all the way around go all the way around and then we move down. So now I've got two rows of beads still alternating in my pattern, purple, green, purple, green. On the second row, I added a third bead um, because that'll give us a little bit more sound. It also take up a little bit more room on the rung. So now at this point, we just keep going and it looks like we've got maybe two, two or three more rows to go before we can start um, tying an empty row or two, and then we're coming close to finish and we can start making some music. So now we're at the point where we have enough beads to call this finished if we like. It's got a nice full sound to it. We, we could continue doing beads, but um, I actually really like the sound of this and I don't really want it to get too much louder. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to start tying it off just as we did at the top. We're going to take two neighboring inside strings like these, and we're just going to tie those together as we did up at the top. But like I said, if you want to keep going with beads, you're more than welcome to do so. So now we're just going for an empty diamond here. We're going to make a loop. There's a diamond, and then we're going to make a knot on the end of that. Right? So we're going to continue that all the way around and we might do that two rows of that before we tie all of the strings into a knot. Nearly done. All right. So now we've got our skirt or net complete and we're ready to tie it off. So I like to collect all of these strings hanging in the bottom, turn this upside down, give it a little twist to gather these and we're going to loop it. Pull these through, leaving a little space. And I say, shake the ray, shake the ray, shake the ray, shake the ray, shake the ray. So here's um, some examples of some of the other gourds and some of the sounds and some other um, styles of playing. This one is using wood beads and it has a little bit of a mellower sound. So uh, that's something to consider is that you can use different types of beads to get different sounds. Here's a big one that's hollowed out on the inside and it actually has what's called a bass tone. If you hit the bottom of it, you'll hear a doop.
big one. Here's a, a little dipper gourd. And it's called a dipper gourd because you could cut the cut a hole in this gourd if you wanted, if you weren't using it for an instrument, and you can make a, a dipper or a, a big spoon or ladle. But in this case, I wanted to make an instrument. got this little baby. This is a Chinese bottle gourd and it's got wooden beads and it's got a pretty pretty mellow and smooth sound. See it, it's it's not that much smaller than this one but this one has plastic beads and you can hear the quite quite a large difference in sound between these two. Now this is my this is my personal favorite one of mine of my collection and it's kind of just like a big maraca but it's got also an adjustable skirt bottom so that we can open it up and create an even bigger sound with these beads. Or we can tighten it up and have an even smaller sound. Now there's one more with an opening and it also creates a tone aside from these. So you see, every gourd has its own unique sound. I just want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoy making your gourd shaker. Eh? I hope that you share this information with friends and family, and as always, peace, love, and respect.